Hey traders, have you ever wondered what the difference is between simple, exponential and whole moving average? What to use when and which one will give you the best trading results? Well today I'm going to break these down for you and give you some practical examples of how you can add these to your strategy to get better trading results. Moving averages are fundamental tools in technical analysis, but each type has its own unique characteristics. They're great for defining entry and exit signals, validating trends and providing a clear visual representation of the market's momentum. Remember I'm not a financial advisor, this isn't financial advice, I trade algos and cryptos which is a high risk way to invest you must do your own research and thoroughly backtest any strategy before running live because you could lose all your money let's dive in so let's start our journey with the simple moving average or the sma the sma calculates the average closing price over a specified period providing a smooth line that helps identify trends so if you're looking at a 14 day sma then we'll take the closing price over the last 14 days and take the average of these prices giving equal weight to all the data points within this time frame this makes smas excellent for spotting overarching trends over more extended periods now let's move to Exponential Moving Average, or EMA. Unlike its simpler cousin, EMA is a trend spotting ninja. It gives more weight to the recent prices, making it more responsive to market shifts. So how does it do this? Well, it applies a multiplier to the more recent data points in its calculation. So for a 14-day EMA, we're taking the last 14 days of data points, and we're taking a weighted average, with more emphasis on the more recent day's prices. A lot of traders would agree that the newer data better reflects the current trend of an asset. The SMA may rely too heavily on outdated data, since it may be taking prices into account that were seen before significant events or macro factors. Giving the same weighting and consideration to last year's Bitcoin price, for example, may not be as practical as looking at it in the last week or so, given that we've got things like the ETF approval, the Securities and Exchange Commission lawsuits against Coinbase and Ripple, and the upcoming halving event to consider. So to visualize this, we've got the daily Bitcoin prices here, we've got a 14-day simple moving average in yellow, and an exponential moving average in blue. You can see that as the price rises, the EMA line in blue rises quicker than the SMA line because it's taking more notice of these recent higher candles and we're getting a steeper line in this curve. The EMA's responsiveness makes it an excellent choice for traders looking to capture shorter term opportunities. It's like having a radar system that pinpoints shifts in the market sentiment quicker. Now let's take this one step further with the whole moving average, or HMA. Although lesser known, this moving average is like a hidden gem in the world of trading indicators, often overlooked but incredibly powerful. The HMA again focuses on weighted averages, but it applies even more significance to the more recent data points. It calculates two weighted moving averages, one for the entire length of time and another for half its length. It multiplies the shorter period by two and then subtracts the first weighted average before taking the square root of the lot. Why does it do this? By focusing more on only the recent half of the data, the HMA is even more responsive to short-term fluctuations than the EMA, but by subtracting the first weighted average, it can smooth out the curve a little, providing a filter for some of the false signals and unnecessary noise. So let's look at it in action. Here on the graph again, you can see the simple moving average in yellow and the exponential in blue. This time with the whole moving average in red and you can see the curve more closely follows the price action, reducing the lag time. Well, why is this important? Well, it means we can respond even quicker to price fluctuations, making HMA a better validator for short-term movements. So if we have a strategy based on moving averages and the market's starting to fall, then the HMA is going to give us a quicker exit signal than some of its slower friends while still keeping one eye on the bigger picture. So how can we practically put these into practice to improve your trading results? Well, the first two ways are through trend validation and identification of entry and exit signals. So as with any moving average, they can be used for identifying trends. When the price is consistently above the moving average, it signals an uptrend, and conversely, if it's below, then it signals a downtrend. And typically with the SMA, I'm looking for longer term trends, and with the EMA and HMA, I'm looking for shorter term trends. And so if I have a longer term strategy, I might have a condition like this one that checks whether the price is above its longer term SMA. That tells me we're under bullish conditions or a rising market. And under this particular strategy, that's one of the conditions I'm looking for in order to trigger a buy signal. In this second example, rather than looking at whether the price directly is above the long-term average, I might look at a shorter term and a longer term average and check whether the shorter term is higher than the longer term. So in this example, I've got 10 periods and 30 periods. So that's how I might use the simple or the exponential averages. We know the HMA, on the other hand, is better suited for capturing more immediate shifts in market sentiment, which makes it more ideal for short-term trend identification. So if I have a shorter term strategy, like one that looks to take advantage of intraday swings, I might go with the same setup but use whole instead of simple or exponential. It really depends on your strategy which indicator is going to be more beneficial to you. The third key use is for risk management. Lots of traditional stop losses are based on price action. For example, if the price falls 5% in any 15 minute candle, I might trigger a stop loss then. If the price was steadily falling though, like only a few percent every 15 minutes, then my stop losses might not get triggered. If I have a rule that detects a falling HMA, however, then I can provide an additional backstop helping to diversify my risk management. The choice between simple exponential and whole moving average really depends on your trading strategy 
your objectives and your risk tolerance. Experiment with different combinations, timeframes and parameters to get the best configuration for your strategy. Remember, successful trading involves continuous learning and adaptation. Always backtest your strategy and stay informed about market dynamics and news events. If you found the information valuable, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and hit the notification bell for more insights into algorithmic trading. Happy trading and see you next time.